Hi, I'm Paul Krizber, I'm your happiness expert. And I've got another video for you in this series I'm doing on sex and happiness. And I know for some people, it seems absurd that I'm even doing this topic, but sex is fundamentally a part of who we are as people. And even the book that I wrote, Whole Person Happiness, was all about that there's different components of our lives, all of which need some degree of attention to it to make sure that we're wholly happy. And of course, um, in these weird times that we're in, this whole idea of pandemic sex is just another area of concern when there's already so many other things going on in our lives, keeping healthy, keeping connected to the people we love, right? managing our lives in economic uh, difficult times that we're in. And so this video is about the specifics of pandemic sex. Stay tuned. As a coach, public speaker, and best-selling author, I teach topics just like this one all around the world. So stay tuned and I'll give you practical tools that you can use to make both yourself and those around you both happier and more successful. Yeah, so I'm coming to you from British Columbia, Canada, my little home studio here. And Canada's done you know, overall pretty well in this pandemic. It's obviously, some countries have done much better and some much worse. And the jurisdiction I happen to live in of British Columbia, well, this province has done particularly well. Very few cases, very well managed, and cross our fingers, we're going to get into 2021 with vaccines and, and not too much greater damage done than has already occurred, which is enough, clearly. But one of the things that I have to really um, say with a certain amount of uh, civic pride is that this jurisdiction is also being very clear, along with all the other usual stuff, wearing masks, hand washing, social distancing, that stuff. They've been talking about safe sex in the era of a pandemic. And I, I want this video, I guess, to be a little bit maybe more relevant for single people. And, and first of all, I want to say sex is like a, a basic human right. The same way that we could make an analogy to, to nutrition is a human right. And they're maybe not quite comparable, but without nutrition, we will die. And um, our species dies without sex. And so similar psychological and chemical hormonal rewards exist for both getting nutrition and getting sex. We feel highly rewarded and much healthier and higher levels of well-being when we have an active sex life. And some people might struggle with that. And, and they think that we have a lot of shame in our society and stigma and people should be able to deny their sexuality and go long periods without it. And certainly some people do, and maybe for them that works just fine. But for many, many people, most people in their adult years, they need and want regular sexual expression. And it, there's, of course, there's the same way that you can have poor nutrition and really good nutrition. You can have burgers and fries every day, all day, or you could be blending kale in your, in your um, Vitamix. Well, one of them is better than the other. And same goes for sex, that there's healthy sexual expression and unhealthy sexual expression. And of course, I want to always emphasize things that are for our well-being. And so basic to that in terms of our sexual lives, there's consent. There's this respect and concern for the other person's well-being. And if those components are in place, we're almost always setting up a table where healthy, positive inducing, po good emotion inducing sex is possible. And in the, in the spirit of sex positivity, I wanna just say that everybody should be able to engage in sex even in the middle of a pandemic. And the first and best partner to have sex with might be yourself. <laughs> it's very safe, no STDs, no pregnancies. And uh, it's just, why not? Go for it, do it. A second, very healthy expression of sex might be virtual sex. And, you know, I would have struggled by saying that out loud not that many years ago. I, it's, I'm old enough, 52 years old, that I don't see myself as someone who has much for social relationships that exist in a virtual world. And yet young people, my sons, for example, have tons of friends that they connect with all the time in virtual ways. And so I come to realize, and even in the midst of this pandemic, I've come to realize even more and more, the people who are closest to me, I spend a lot of time now on a computer screen with, when in the past I would have met them in person. And so consider virtual sex, another very safe way to have sex. And our public health officials in BC have been so open and honest about um, healthy sexuality in the era of the pandemic that we've actually heard them talk about things like glory holes. And if you don't know what that is, don't go looking it up. It might make you too squeamish, but it's this notion that you can have actual sexual interactions with other human beings without ever coming into face-to-face -face contact, that there might be holes for which you can access one another without actually seeing each other. It seems very weird. And of course, from that maybe extreme uh, sounding idea, 
There's also the idea that people who are meeting with new partners can wear a mask. And it's weird. I know that's not how we think of rich, good social, sexual relations, but that would be a way to keep it safe. And you might start thinking of the same way that people should be talking to their um, prospective new partners about uh, STDs and, and their sexual health. We could now really use the same COVID quizzing that we use in all kinds of other places. Like when you're getting on an airplane, they say, you know, where, when have you traveled out of the country and do you have any of these symptoms like uh, headaches and colds and sore throats and coughing and that kind of stuff. Well, all of those kinds of questions can be asked in the context of making and meeting new partners and bringing small numbers of individuals into one social bubble in part to satisfy one's sexual desi desires. And I, I think this is healthy for us to talk about and maybe even especially encourage younger people to see this. We so stigmatize the youth in our society about sex being kind of taboo and that if you, you do it too much, you're dirty, or if your desire is too great that you can't control it, there's something wrong with you. And of course, post-pubescent adults, young people have sexual desires like the rest of us. That doesn't mean we need to act on it all the time, but to act on it is not necessarily unhealthy. And again, so long as it's consensual and respectful, then sex for young people is just as good for people as it is for older mature adults. If it um, feels good, it um, removes social isolation, makes people feel connected, then that sexual expression is wonderful and young people should feel good doing it in the context where it's consensual, respectful and intended for the well-being for one another. And we all need that. And of course, even for people who are in the midst of their long-term committed monogamous relationships, pandemic sex is all the more important. And we know there's certain ways that we are struggling when we've got lots of anxiety and too much time spent together if we're all working at home, then sex even in that context can be difficult. And I might encourage people to engage in some of these kinds of weirder things. Participate in some virtual foreplay, if not virtual sex with your partner. Do things that take it out of the ordinary because what we need to stimulate sexual desire often is something with a bit of novelty to it. So if that's where you are in your long-term relationship, do something novel, wear something unusual, make a different uh, play in terms of getting your partner's interest and talk about it in a healthy way because we need it. And God knows we need a lot of things right now as we're going through tough times in our societies throughout the world. Well, enjoy our sex lives as best we can. Stay safe. Talk to you next time. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe to my channel. You get a new video every Sunday morning. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.